connecting with the energy of this week, the name of the section of this week called Itro, known as Jetro. In the story itself, um, we read a little bit about this individual, Jetro, and one of the main events, not only in the biblical story, maybe in history, known as the revelation on Mount Sinai, the, what is known among so many people as the Ten Commandments, that we will understand very quickly that this is a very wrong translation of the origin uh, name that appears in the biblical text. But the main energy, the main event that takes place within the story of this week is related to what is known as the Ten Commandments in Hebrew, in the, the biblical text called the Aseret Adibot, which is the Ten Utterances. The first thing we want to, to understand before we getting into the practicality of our spiritual work that, um, that we, can, we can focus on for this week, According to the teachings of the Kabbalists, the, the Ten Utterances, those of you who studied with us for a while, you already heard before the number 10 and the meaning of the number 10, right? What is the number 10 related to? What do you think? Sphere, that's right. This is one of the basic teachings in the wisdom of the Kabbalah, the way the whole spiritual world operates. In order to understand that, we always use what's known as the tree of life, the ten sefirot, the ten spiritual dimensions, ten emanations. However, so we talk about the ten utterances, but according to all the, the teachings, we're not what humanity used to think it is, orders from God, things that you should do or things that you should not do. Those ten utterances represent the what known as the tree of life, those ten spirot, those ten emanations. That when we speak about the idea or the concept of the tree of life, we talk about the totality of the spiritual tools and totality of the spiritual energy that is available in life, that is available in, in this universe. The connection with the tree of life it is obviously not something physically that one can, can do, but the connection with the tree of life, if you would try to visualize for a second, again, to take the mind just to a different uh, place, to a different way of looking at reality or experiencing uh, reality, the tree of life is known as the flawless universe. A reality, very different than what we experience in life, we're experiencing life known as the tree of knowledge, good and bad. Things going up and down, it depends on the day. It's like the stock market. How do you feel today? It depends. The way we connect with the light of the Creator, with divine energy, very often it depends on things. This is the, the tree of knowledge, good and bad. The connection with the tree of life is a connection that when you climb into that place, the connection with the divine, with the light of the Creator, is no longer dependent on any physical or any type of experience around you. Everything becomes light. Everything becomes somehow, which is out of the way of the logical mind works. How can everything be light? How can everything be amazing? How can everything be good? The connection with the tree of life represents that type of reality, reality of perfection. When one is getting or making a connection with this dimension, with this reality known as the tree of life, we can, we can visualize kind of what um, abilities you receive, right? Because connection with the tree of life means you have all the strength that you need to overcome any challenge, to overcome any darkness. Why? Since darkness does not exist in the presence of the light. Any darkness or any challenge becomes a very clear opportunity to expand and to manifest more positive energy and growth in, in our process. So the tree of life is a connection that we make throughout our consciousness, not through our things that we do. And therefore the ten utterances that literally saying to the humanity what you should do, what you should not do, people can follow those utterances and achieve no connection with the divine energy because the connection with the energy is not connected with what we do. Of course, it is important what we do. 
but it never starts and never ends with the actions themselves. What is the most extreme negativity that humanity, that we, this world of the ups and downs can experience? What is the most extreme, extreme of darkness, of negativity this world can experience? Death. So if, again, we take the mind just out of this world for a second, realizing that the truth of our life's reality means no death. No death mean, means what? Immortality. Immortality does not start and again does not end in the physical level. Immortality it is a state of connection with the light of the Creator. When one is manifesting any form of blessing, any form of energy in their lives, in our lives, we are all experiencing moments that we gain and manifest blessings, but we do experience as well moments that we feel we lose. In the tree of life reality, there is no lose. There is only gain. No death means no end. No end for the happiness. You got excited, you got motivated. There is no end for this energy. When you are attached your energy to the tree of life, this fuel internally doesn't end because the energy is infinite. So the moment we plug into this reality, we talk about a connection with energy that is not finite. That is not finite. In the most extreme way is that there is no death even physically. That every cell of the body is attached somehow to its embryonic state to its original state of existence, where the cell originally does not die, does not be replaced by other cells. Energy of stem cells for every cell in our body. The ability to, re to rejuvenate, the ability to, to be in this state of mind. The ability to experience the light, the divine energy with no limits. So when Kabbalistically we speak about this week and about the revelation on Mount Sinai, we talk about the revelation of the tree of life, we talk about the revelation of immortality. After all, we know the way that we experience life depends on our perception, does not depend on the event itself. We've spoke about it many times. Two people might experience the same thing physically, but they feel different. One will look at it as major blessing, the other one will look at it as a major chaos. It's the same thing. So again, the connection with the tree of life, if we can visualize for a second, just to plant the seed for this week, to take the mind out of this world, that within this world our perception is being di dictated by all those spiritual blinders and filters and everyone grasps different aspects of reality and for us it will be the complete truth what we see what we feel it will be the complete truth because our mind will justify why, why, what we see and what we feel and we don't know anything different than that the big question the Kabbalists ask if this is the energy that is being awakened and it's not just energy that being awakened in this week it's energy that we can awaken within ourselves why this weak energy named after Jethro the sages could call it the tree of life week the immortality week the revelation on Mount Sinai, the ten utterances, many things. Why? It's like, you know, you walk in, you know, in some streets and you wonder, you know, why did they name the street under this person, right? So we don't talk about the name of a street. We talk about a name in the biblical text that was given after Jethro. Why Jethro? Who was Jethro? When you open the, the text, the biblical text, what you can... What you can find is that, first of all, Jethro was a Midianite. One of the nations, the ancient, uh, the ancient nations of that time was called Midian. So you can find that he was a Midianite. You can find that he was the leader of the Midianites. You can find that he was high priest. Meaning not just leading a nation or leading the people. The priest is kind of a title that is given to a spiritual individual. He was a high priest. What type of a priest? It is very clear. It says about uh, Jethro that he was one of the greatest priests of darkness. He mastered black magics. He was a very powerful individual, just used all of his powers in a very negative way. In a very negative way. What else do we know about Jethro? We know he was one of the three main advisors for Pharaoh. Now again, we need to understand what it means. We're going back 3,400 years ago, we talk about Egypt as the empire of the world. 
Pharaoh, the king of the main empire of the world, does not make any decision without his three advisors. Any decision that Pharaoh would make would be with those three individuals. One of them was Jethro. He was one of the main advisors of Pharaoh. Very wise man. One more thing that we know that, you know, for me every year, it doesn't fit with the picture. He was the father-in-law of Moses. Moses, the leader who took the Israelites out of the slavery, out of Egypt. The first few words in the section of this week, I will read it for you. It says, And Jethro heard of everything God had done for Moses and his people. This is the few words. And Jethro heard. And the sages ask, what exactly did he hear? What is it that God has done for, the, for Moses and the Israelites? So they all speak about the same idea. He heard about the miracle that happened with the splitting of the Red Sea. And he heard that Moses, with the Israelites, won over the nation of Amalek. There was another nation called Amalek in the desert. They had a war. And Moses and his people won over the battle against Amalek. Those of you studying with us for a while, you already know the secret behind Amalek. It is the force of doubts and uncertainty. The Zohar in verse 28 writes, I will read it in Aramaic to awaken, not just to connect with the wisdom, but to awaken this energy inside of us. The Zohar writes, verse 28, Vaishmai to Vegomer. I'll read you the translation. Zohar writes, when Jethro, this individual, he asks, only Jethro heard while the rest of the world did not hear? Was it just Jethro hearing about the miracle of the splitting of the Red Sea, hearing about the Israelites with the leadership of Moses overcoming the nation of Amalek, which was a nation that no one till that moment could overcome? Was it just Itro, just Jethro? It is not written, the people shall hear and be afraid. It's from Exodus 15, 14. He answers, indeed, the whole world did hear. Within all the writings, we can find that the entire world, back at the time, there wasn't maybe, you know, Twitter, but they had their own spiritual network to deliver messages. The whole world did hear about those miracles that Jethro heard as well. But they were not broken. Therefore, it was as if they did not hear. But he heard and was broken and yelled before the, the, the Holy One, blessed be him, and was brought near to fearing him. Therefore, his is indeed a hearing. What does the Zohar say? That... Yes, it wasn't just Jethro uh, who heard about the miracles. The entire world heard. However, the Zohar writes, Jethro was broken by what he heard, and the entire world did not. What is the meaning behind it? The Zohar is encouraging us to be broken people. Is this the goal, to be broken human beings? Of course, this is not the idea. What does the Zohar speak about? But the Kabbalists explain that the part that got broken within Jethro was the part of his ego. In the spiritual process, you never want to break your soul. You never want to break who you are. You want to break and to break through what is limiting you from becoming and achieving what you're meant to achieve in this world. The number one force that brings the limitations, makes us experiencing life in the ups and downs through the reality of what we call the tree of knowledge, good and bad, and separating us from the tree of life is the ego. What got broken within Jethro? The ego in Jethro was broken. So Jethro heard something that helped him to break some level of his ego. The entire world did, it, did hear the same thing, but there wasn't any part of their ego that got broken. Think about what does it mean. Jethro, for many, many, many years, lives his life with enormous desire, an enormous desire. He was one of the number one individuals in his generations, as far as wisdom, as far as power, as far as strength, control, respect. And one day, he wakes up, he hears something that the entire world heard, and affects it in, in such a degree that he is realizing that moment, there is a moment of an awakening that he realized 
oh my God, for more than 50 years of my life, I lived wrong. Think about how painful is this moment. When one is experiencing an awakening, and there is spark, there's a clarity comes into us, appointing over even one thing in life, and tells me, I just realized, you know, the way I managed my relationships in li life till now was so wrong. This realization, this awakening, what does it create inside of me? Of course, normally it will hit the point of my ego, as we mean that I'm not smart, it means that I was blind, it means that I was not good enough. What does it mean? We all go into our insecurities when a new revelation is being awakened and we are capable to see, to see, to understand something. It is like you read a book that awakens something inside of you. Any moment that we feel that there is this awakening, this truth being awakened inside of us, we never talk about truth that is universal. We talk about truth that resonates with who you are. At that moment when there is an awakening and I realize, oh my God, I just realized that there's something in my life I've done in the last two months, 20 years, that was completely wrong. That was completely wrong. This awakening, very often and for most of people, according to this teaching, will fade out of their, of their essence. There will be an awakening and after two days, sometimes two hours or two weeks, a person even, even doesn't, cannot even recall only when it will happen again, then he will feel, or she will feel, you know, oh my God, this is the second time that I'm being awakened about it. But there are three phases in the process of Jethro that was leading him to his complete transformation. And transformation doesn't mean, again, changing who you are. Transformation means getting rid of things that are limiting you and elevating yourself. Bring yourself up into the place where you should be. There are three steps that Jethro went through that we want to embrace for the work of this week. The first thing is the first word of this section, Jethro heard. If I'm not open to hear, many people can talk to me about the same thing. I can get messages in so many directions, but somehow it will not affect anything in my life. It will come from one year and will leave from the, from the other year. In some point, it will even bother me. I don't want even to hear that. Jethro, was open to hear. The second phase, as the Zohar mentioned, he allowed his ego to get broken. When you embrace change, you are willing to let your ego to get broken. And yes, maybe I've done mistakes, maybe I didn't see certain things, maybe I made choices in my life and I acted in certain ways that, you know what, this is not the way to live. There is much more better way to think, to feel, to make decisions, to do, but in order to tap into that, the second phase, allow my, my, some part of my ego to get broken. The third phase, the Kabbalah is saying, Jethro surrender to the new way, to the new awakening, to the new path. So he lived, was living his life in all of those negative ways. He got this awakening. He was willing, again, to allow it to break his ego, embrace the change. But this is not enough. It is not enough. Because the change will be always to elevate us to a high level in life. The change is not just, again, to realize something that I need to do different. In order to get myself to do different in my life, I need to surrender to the new path, to the new awakening, to the new realization. Which is not always easy. Because there will be always thoughts that will try to pull us down back into the old way of thinking and living life. So those... Three phases. This is the first idea. In the point of the surrendering, what the Kabbalists explain, it's a point that I'm subjecti subjecting my desire to my higher desire. Subjecting my current desire that I had in the last two years, 50 years, to the new level of the desire that was awakened inside of me. This week we want to make sure that we're making ourselves more open to here. If there will be a true desire to hear, you will get very clear messages. Those messages will not be comfortable because they will be hitting your ego. But you want to take it in, you want to embrace the change, you want to allow this new awakening, new energy to break the old system in order to elevate you to a new system. 
And the third phase is again, seeing how do I take this new awakening and how this starts to be applied into my life, the way I think, my choices, my actions. The Kabbalists explain these three steps, it is just the first phase to connect again with the energy of Jethro and the energy behind the revelation eventually that happened, the revelation of the tree of life. But there is a secret behind it. How does Jethro achieve this place? To be open, how he achieved this place? To allow himself to, to break his ego, to break his own old vessel mentality in order to develop himself to a higher place. And how did he achieve this place of surrendering to the new path? Because we all go into those phases, but not always those phases affecting real long-term lasting change. Many times again, we're going back into the old ways. We realized what was wrong in the last relationship in our life. We got the lesson I realized, you know, I did not put any boundaries in this relationship. I need to place boundaries. You know what? I was too selfish. I need to open my heart more. And then getting into a new type of relationship and falling to the same mindset. No boundaries, closing my heart, the same patterns. The awakening can be temporary. We don't want the awakening to, to be temporary. We want the awakening to affect lasting change, to help us to elevate to a new level. So before I'm sharing with you the key that we all be, will be able hopefully to use within our spiritual work to connect with this idea, I want you to share in a few minutes, in your own words, just the idea that I shared with you, just to make sure your friend got it. And if you have any example about your life, about an awakening that happened to you, that you allowed this new revelation, this new light, this new clarity to break the old you, the old way of thinking, and you did see change that lasts at least till now, if you have any example like that, share it with a friend sitting next to you. Okay, a few minutes, please. Okay, how many of you feel, again, practically, not just, you know, in, not just in the mind, but how many of, of you feel that, that you do have the desire to be able, first, to be open for the messages to come in, second, to be in a place having so much strength that you don't, not only that you don't care about breaking your ego, but you're actually desiring to break the ego in order to ignite and to awaken greater aspect of the energy of your soul, since the ego is the only force that's limiting the energy of our soul in this world. And to be able to maintain constant connection with this energy, to learn the lesson, to grow, to move up, to learn another lesson, to break another part of my ego, to take it practically into my life, living differently, process of constant Again, move, moving up. How many of us desiring this, this type of energy in life? The question is, what is the key? Of course, our transformation, our growth is a gradual transformation. As we know, there is nothing in this world that just happens suddenly. This transformation that Jethro manifested did not happen suddenly. There were many, many, many seeds that were planted by him in his journey to allow him in that moment to be able to capture something that the entire world could not capture and to elevate himself into that place. Complete transformation to achieve what his soul came to achieve in this world. When we ask, who was Jethro? And we can read all of those things from the text that he was a Midianite and a priest, high priest. When we're getting into the Zohar, when we're getting into the writings of Rabbi Isaac Luria, the Ari, if you open the writings of Diary from the 16th century, you will not be able to read all the technical things of the story of Jethro. If I would ask you, tell me, who are you? And you tell me, you know, I am Yehuda and I'm teaching Kabbalah and uh, I live in Los Angeles. Is this who I am? Who are you? Who are you? You are not the one that what people see that you do. It might be that our actions reflecting some of our essence, but this is not who we are. When we're getting into the ancient writings of the Ariel, Rabbi Isaac Luria, Rabbi Isaac Luria is showing through one of the verses a secret that was coded within this portion. When we speak about Jethro and when we speak about Moses, of course, they didn't meet by coincidence in that lifetime. 
Moses grew up in the, fa- in the palace of Pharaoh. Jethro was the advisor, the, one of the main advisors of Pharaoh, right? They were together for many years. They knew about each other. Moses got married with the daughter of Jethro, before even. So the Ali is taking us back into different lifetimes and explains that Moses was the soul reincarnation of Abel. Abel, the son of Adam and Eve. Jethro was the soul, was incarnated from Cain, the brother of Abel. The both now coming back into another lifetime, experiencing a journey, completely different pathways. Cain now is Jethro, Abel now is Moses. Reminding all of us, Cain was the second soul individual who manifested negativity in the forces of humanity. The first was coded as the sin of Adam and Eve without getting into the code of it, but the second was Cain. What was the negativity that Cain manifested? Killing. Cain killed his brother Abel. This is a known biblical story. So the whole correction of Cain was to correct negativity that he manifested in a different lifetime that related to killing. Mortality. Just reminding us that the whole energy of this week is connected with the tree of life, which is energy of immortality. Now Cain, which is Jethro, received the merit of having his name with the power of immortality. Somehow he completed the correction. Somehow he removed all the negativity that he created in a different lifetime. So let's go back to one point that I shared with you. That Jethro was one of the main advisors, one of the three main advisors of Pharaoh, right? The other two main advisors of Pharaoh were Iov, known as Job, and Bilam. Those of you who never heard the names, it is fine just to know the three of them were in the same level of power. The same level of, of wisdom, same power of, of, of energy, what they were capable to do with their spiritual powers was technically to destroy the entire world if it would be their intention. They are very negative individuals, but very powerful and very wise. As we said, every decision that Pharaoh took went through his advisors. Along all the way, all the three advisors, Jethro, Job, and Bilam, were always on the same page. If Pharaoh would come up with a question, what should we do? They all would be aligned. All of them would see the same thing, would express the same thing. Only one time it didn't happen. When Pharaoh came with his idea to kill every baby Hebrew uh, uh, born. Pharaoh came with an idea that he wants to kill all the babies of the Israelites. So he called the advisors. This is what he does. What do you think about it, my idea? Normally they would, they would jump saying, you know, great idea. We can even do it in a greater man- way, in greater manners. We can manifest even greater negativity than this. But in this case, it was different. The first one, Bilam, told Pharaoh, we should kill them. The second advisor, Job, he felt this is very wrong. He felt it is very wrong. But he did not say anything. He kept silent. The third one was our friend Jethro. Jethro was the one to tell Pharaoh, Not only we should not kill them, we should keep them alive. We should keep them alive. Remember that Jethro was a very wise individual, not less than Job. Job, if you think this way, you know know what's the intention of Pharaoh. You know it's not going to to be good with Pharaoh. He wants to to manifest destruction. And you're here to help to manifest the destruction. Job knew that. He felt it is wrong in this case. He kept silent. We might think, you know, if you'd be wise, you'd be silent. Job was not a stupid guy. He knew knew that what he sees to be the right thing to do, which is to keep them alive, will cost him if he will express what he believes to be right. Will cost him in his position. He knew that he will no longer be advisor of Pharaoh. It will cost him in his status, in the kingdom, in the empire, and it might even cost him in his life. And what happened? Pharaoh wanted to kill him. This is why Jethro ran to the desert. He ran away. When Jethro expressed what he believed to be right, it was not from a blind place. 
it was, it was with accepting the potential consequence of what he's doing. Losing his power in the kingdom, losing his position, losing his status, and again, in his case, even might be losing his life. He was not afraid. He was not afraid. Jethro was not the type of an individual who does things in order to exchange energy with other people. Jethro was not an individual in his entire life with all the negativity he manifested. He was never defined himself by the way people defining him. He did not need the recognition of anyone. He never did anything in order to please Pharaoh. Anything that he was doing, it was because he believed this is the right thing to do. This is the right thing to do. When the test came, when what he believed to be the right thing to do was contradicting with the world, he was not afraid. His entire life, he built himself into that place, having no fear. Having no fear regarding what? Regarding what? Of losing my position by me following what I believe to be right. How one can tap and touch the tree of life reality? The tree of life reality is completely light. The moment there is a revelation of light, when I feel there is something right for me to do, but now I'm hesitating, you know? What will be the consequence? Maybe my friends will not like me anymore. Maybe society will not like me anymore. Maybe I lose my power and my position in where I am. What is that energy that we can draw from this Jethro? It is not the Jethro of 3,400 years ago. It's this spark of Jethro that exists within each one of us. When we feel there is the right thing to do, and all the fear is coming in and convincing us, no, no, it's not the right time, you know? I will take some time, you know, when I will feel the right time is coming, then I will say, then I will do. The ability to act upon what you believe is the right thing to do is your connection with the tree of life. Jethro, in his entire life, what he believed the right thing to do was negative. But even the negativity that he manifested, it was deep inside of him. He believed this is the right thing to do. He could not see anything different. He couldn't see anything else beside of this pathway that he was involved with before. But this first time that the spark was awakened inside of him, if we think, you know, he had so much compassion to the kids, maybe because of that, you know. Maybe the lesson is have compassion. And this is what will plug you into the tree of life. No. No. It's not about compassion. This week is not the lesson about compassion. Because we all have compassion in our heart. But to express our compassion in the times that we might lose our position, this is the connection with the tree of life. When we no longer live by exchange of energy, the way I am and what I get from my surrounding, and if I would act upon what I believe to be the right thing, maybe, you know, I'll, I might lose. I might lose position, power, friends. If you might lose, you already lost. You're already in the wrong place. You're already in the wrong place attached to all the energy that is not healthy for you. It is not something that we feel every day again. But those moments in our process, in our journey of life, when we feel there is something right to do, this is the windows. Jethro. Never missed them. This is beyond the human ability. If I'm thinking about my own self, you know, I know that I'm missing many opportunities. But this is why we have the energy of this week. If we do have the desire to plug into this reality known as the tree of life, to be able to see life as a process that only gain, there is no losing. If you lose something that was not right for you, this is your gain. Get rid of the old things that are not helping you grow. Just keeping the position and just keeping all the things that feed in the ego. Rav Ashwad in this book, he called the thought of creation. On page 60, speaks about the, the idea, I will read for you only the title. Why is it important to develop and expand the desire for material things? Many times the spiritual people, they think, eh, you know, this is not a point, the material world. But when you do understand what the material world is about, it's not this physicality. The levels of the desire that we have that are attached to things that seem to be not spiritual. Like what? Like power. Do you want to be powerful? No, oh, no, you know, I don't want to be so powerful. You know, it will get into my ego. Do you want respect? No, you know, it's not spiritual. You know, to desire respect in life. You know, I want to be humble. You know, you know who is the person that it says was in history the most humble human being? That's right, Moses. Do you know how much respect he received? A lot. Sometimes we compromise because we don't truly understand the meaning in it. 
Jethro wanted respect, he wanted to be wealthy, he wanted to have power, he wanted to control all the things that so many people would say, this is not a spiritual thing, you know? Why are you chasing after this? Rav Ashlag explains that all of those desires are imbued within each one of us. You cannot get rid of it. You cannot get rid of it. As much as you try to convince yourself, I don't want respect, I don't want power, I don't want this, I don't want that, it's just ego. Those desires are imbued within who we are, the way we were created. You know why? Because in the essence, we are aligned with the Creator. The Creator has respect. The Creator has all the abundance in the world. The Creator has the control ever over everything. All of those attributes of God exist within each one of us. We cannot re get rid of it. The only thing we can learn is how to transform those attributes to use them for the benefit of the world. So as a spiritual being, to tell myself, you know, I don't want more power in the company I work in, you know, in my neighborhood, in my community, you know, maybe step up, maybe try to do more, maybe take control of it. No, it's not for me, you know. Expanding our connection with the desire for the things that seem to be non-spiritual is the direction eventually to have all of those power to be able to manifest them in spiritual level. Because if it will not happen, the people that are not in the direction of transformation will own those powers. So the first thing we need to understand that all the things that we convincing ourselves, this is not spiritual things. You know, why do I need more power? I do need more power. I do need respect. If I would not get respect from you guys, you would not sit here and listen to me. Now, the question between me and the Creator is the way that I'm taking it in. Is it going to feed my ego or is it going to help me to manifest more change inside of myself and inside of other people around me? This is a question between me and God. Nobody can say. But when you have the desire to be in this pathway, to reach the tree of life reality, you are not afraid of all the things that people normally were in a spiritual path afraid of. You want more. Expand the desire. You need more. You need more money. Yes, you need more money. More money can be used to do more good for other people. Don't be ashamed. Yes, you need more respect. Because if you will use more respect in the right direction, you will be able to influence positive change in the world. Desire more. But the desiring more has to come with the, with the willingness to be open and to be in those three phases that I share with you of being open, being willing to break my ego, and being open again to surrender to the new enlightenment, to the new awakening that is manifesting inside of me to take my life to a higher place. In order to draw this energy into our lives, beside of what we did before with the three steps, take the time this week to think where your fear is blocking you from doing what you believe to be the right thing to do. Awakening our desire to break the fears that limiting us from doing the right things we believe to be the right things in life because of we afraid of losing position or things in that level, realizing that there will be only a gain.